Cruz is here just a month after that surgery, along with her plastic surgeon, Dr. Leif Rogers. Welcome. Pretty cool stuff. Welcome, both of you. Yeah, that's, that's taking fat from one part of the body where you don't want it and putting it to good use, right? And, you know, you and I make a living doing breast surgery. We're looking at women's breasts day in and day out, and most women do have a difference in size between their breasts. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the way Cruz looked before. So, I mean, you, you really had a big difference between the two sides. It was hard to fit in a bra. It was hard to... You really didn't day. go to the beach, did you? <laughs> no. So what, what did you have to... I went to the beach, to... didn't get in the water. <laughs> okay, so we Sorry. saw your before. Let's see how you look side by side, your before and your after picture. Wow. Yeah. Looks like you're ready for the beach oh, yeah. now, right? Can't wait. Can't wait to go on vacation and actually go and splash around the water without anything falling off. Okay. <laughs> Meaning <and> stuffing. <laughs> well, good for you. That's a wonderful result. About how far out now? Uh, a little over a month. Okay. Yeah. And are you expecting some of that to go away? Well, most of the resorption, meaning the fat that does go away, happens within the first about six weeks or so. I mean, she's pretty much around that, that time when it's going to be pretty stable. So what she has, for the most part, is what she gets. There might be a very small change, but it's going to be really minor at this point. So what, what made her such a good candidate for this option? She's an ideal candidate. First of all, the difference wasn't, I mean, it was significant, as you can see in the picture, but it wasn't that much more than one cup size. If it's really a much bigger than one cup size difference, you kind of either have to resort to reducing one side, doing something to the other side, implant, or possibly just doing multiple fat grafting. So, so number one, the, the, the good candidate is someone that doesn't have a huge difference in volume huge, about between cup, the two sides. About a cup size. About a cup size is what you can do in one, one step. Secondly, she had a little extra fat. So that actually made her the best candidate. If you're, if you're too thin, when I say too thin, you have very little excess fat. It's hard to get that fat so out. So how much so fat did you remove from the tummy? Well, we removed actually probably about a liter. We didn't okay. use a whole liter. We used about 300 cc's. So she got a little extra benefit. We got so a little extra took out a liter, put 300 cc's into the breast, yeah. and we saw how you do that, how yeah. you did that. Yeah. And uh, an important part is how you treat the fat before you, you put it back in. So I saw that you strained it, being very delicate with those little fat cells. Mm -hmm. That's the key with the way you do it, correct? It, absolutely. There's a few different techniques you can use. Some people like to spin it, meaning put it in a centrifuge. It kind of it spins the fluid off. I find that's probably a little rough, especially when you have to deal with a large volume of fat. I mean, that would take forever. This, this technique actually works quite nicely. It's pretty basic. You can see exactly what we're doing. All right. It works and what's interesting, most people don't think of fat as living tissue. Yeah. But it is. Oh, absolutely. Just like your fat is alive in your body and cells. Fat Just cells. And you've got some neat demos here that yeah. you're going to show us exactly what you did. Okay, well, what you have here, I have, uh, well, we have, these are just sort of like the, uh, the so-called, I guess, chicken cutlets that people you put in their bras in order to, to fix things just like this or just to give you a little bigger breast. Uh, and I, I'm using this as a demo. Now, assuming this is the breast, this is the actual breast tissue, this is not fat, but... It looks is, like it. Yeah, it does look like fat. You know, I got it in the dairy section, but... <laughs> So you, and there's a very thin little cannula. As you can see, this very, very thin. It's got a little hole in the end. So this will go into the breast and in multiple layers. We try to stay out of the actual breast tissue itself. So we go above the breast tissue, under the skin, or under the breast tissue. And the reason for that is because of mammography, right? Exactly. Examining the breasts and detecting masses. Exactly. You can sometimes leave... Uh, masses that may show up on a mammogram. If it's right in the center of a breast, it can definitely bring up, raise a red flag. Mm -hmm. So it may require further workup. If it's in the right place, the risks are very, very small. So we actually, you, you bring, it, bring it through the breast tissue like that, and as you bring it back... Wow. So that's a with, withdrawing technique, right? Yeah, exactly. So and in, the key there is you're not just pushing in a big clump. You're doing those fine lines, sort of a weaving pattern of fat. This is critical. If you put a big blob of fat in there, it won't survive. Mm -hmm. This, you have to have living tissue around each little strip of fat in order mm -hmm. for those new cells to actually get the blood supply to survive. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they won't. And that's what we've learned with fat transfer. In the old days, when we, we tried it just one big squirt, it didn't take. This gives a much better chance of it taking as a graft. And that's what it is. It's a fat graft, like a skin graft, but we're transferring those fat cells. Exactly. And Cruz, how long till you felt back to normal? Gosh, to me it was like, what, almost right away. Like, the second day I was like, and, nothing. And your smile tells it all. You're pretty happy? Yeah. Oh, yes, I am. Definitely happy. 
So Dr. Rogers, thank you so much.